how to replace the sky in Photoshop while keeping the reflections to get this result. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Romani. I am a French photographer from the amazing city of Paris, France, living in the USA. I'm starting a new show and we're going to start with a new series, which is called Photoshop for Lightroom user. That is for somebody who kind of knows Lightroom, but doesn't really know Photoshop. And I'm going to make a whole series of really small episodes to teach you really cool stuff. So in this first episode, we're going to replace the sky on this photo and then we're going to make it in a way so that we have reflections. So first we start in Lightroom with a bit of retouching and then we finish it up in Photoshop. So. This is a photo that I shot early morning in Paris. I did not like the sky. Uh, the thing is that in Paris early morning, and this is the Louvre by the way, and I think this is the Pont Royal, it's a bridge that gives to the Louvre, is um, in the morning the boat didn't come so you get a really nice reflection. But it was a boring sky, so I want to replace the sky. But the problem is that if I replace the sky in Photoshop, I'm not going to get a reflection. So first let's do a bit of retouching in Lightroom. I'm going to open the shadows a little bit. On this one, I'm not going to bring down the eye. I'm actually not going to open shadows so much because I, I don't want that sky. That sky was not nice. I want a nicer sky. And also, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of free sky. The link is under this video if you want to basically uh, use this sky on your photo. Try this on your photo. So, okay, something like that. That's kind of cool. Now the sky is blown away. Uh, I think I want to warm up the photo a little bit. I want to add a bit of magenta because I want to give it a really early morning. So, yeah, warm up the photo. And that's about what I'm going to do. I might add a bit of clarity, just a tad, just to make it pop a bit, but don't tell anyone, a bit of texture. And uh, voila, so very busy retouching. And now I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to edit, edit in Photoshop 2023. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. And um, now I'm going to show you a couple of things, how to add the free skies that I'm giving you for free. Well, what you have to do is you go to edit, you go to sky replacement, which is here and it's going to open this window this is a sky that we're going to be using which i really like and because i was testing this but you see it doesn't have reflection it looks really weird if it had a reflection it might look more real so how do we first add the free sky i'm giving you the link is under this video well you just click on this image and it's going to open this window if this window doesn't look like mine you can actually resize this window you can make your skies bigger or smaller okay and the first thing I would advise you to do is create a group, okay? Create a group. So I'm gonna have, have a lot of skies because I've been a lot of tutorials. So let's create a group. So that's the group icon, this one. So that's the group, create new sky group. And I'm gonna call it Surge Skies 2023, for example, okay? So Surge Sky 2023, make sure you are on that group. Okay, and uh, yeah, right now it's kind of empty. Don't worry about all the other skies that came from other tutorials or other things. Just click on that group wherever, however it looks on yours. And then you click on this little plus, and then I'm gonna give you all these skies here. Some blue hour sky, this sky here, very nice sky that I shot over the years. And so you just literally select them all by holding the shift key on the first, you click on the first one, you hold on the shift key, on the last one you click open. And that's gonna put this guy, and that's a very important step in Surge Sky 2033. So now here they are, okay? And now if I click on the sky, it's gonna replace the sky and you will see in real time uh, that it's doing this. I mean, this one is kind of nice, but I wanted something kind of crazy like this or crazy like that, I don't know. Uh, it was a nice morning sky. Yeah, and, and I remember the sky, if you look at it, the sky was rising from over there yeah, I think I'm going to use this one here and it could look real if we had a reflection, you know, it could look real if we had a reflection. So let's use that. And, you know, that's what Photoshop gives you. So now how do you add the reflection? Well, thank you for asking. Just press OK on this and you can see here now you have a group called Sky Replacement Group and it just adds the sky. So here's the master trick. What you do is you you right click. Uh, well, actually, you, you select the this this layer here and you press Command J. So you press Command J, but you see here, this is a linked, that means it's just a link layers. And I don't want that. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to unlink layers. I don't want it to be linked. Now it's not linked anymore to this one. I want it to be on its own. And then I'm going to click this and I'm going to drag it out completely out of the sky replacement group. Okay, it is perfect, it's amazing, it's dragged out. Sorry, I'm French. Okay, so now it's here. But we have this mask here. I want to get rid of this mask. I'm going to right click and I'm just going to delete the mask. Okay, so now we have this guy here and it's kind of over the photo. 
Now check this out. We're going to do something called Command T, which is basically going to edit and free transform. You see it's Command T on a Mac, probably Control T on Windows. So I'm going to click on that and that's going to make a selection of this guy here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to flip vertical. The reason I'm doing the flip vertical is I want to create a perfect mirror of this guy. Then I'm going to hold on the shift key and I'm going to drag. The reason why I'm holding the shift key that if I don't hold on the shift key, it's going to go anywhere on the left or the right. Command Z to undo. But if I hold on the shift key, it's going to come down really straight, which is what you want. And I'm going to sort of align this guy with the other one uh, roughly where it should be, something like this, and press Enter. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into multiply mode. So multiply mode, what it's going to do is that it's going to make any white or bright pixel is going to make them transparent, but it still looks really weird, right? Plus the reflection are too precise. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to create a smart object with this guy. Now, what is a smart object? A smart object is just a way that you can apply things to a layer. That's a layer and you can change your mind afterwards. So for example, I want to blur this to make it more real. But let's say I make a mistake on the blur and I want to come back. If I don't put it as a smart object, then I cannot come back. It is not good. So right click, convert to smart object. Now it's a smart object and now we can do whatever we want. Okay, now we can go to filter and we can go to blur gallery and we can go to pass blur. Now why pass blur? Well, thank you for asking. Pass blur because it's going to give it directional blur. And that's what I want because the water is kind of moving. And you see the default value is 50%. I'm going to go here and give it 25%. So, it, so it's a bit blurry, but not that blurry. Okay. And that's all I'm going to do here. Uh, you see it's, it's updating. And this is a very powerful filter. It's kind of a new filter and you need a pretty good computer. It might take a while on your computer and you press OK. Just to show you why I use a smart object, because now you see I have an eye which is blur gallery. Check this out. I can actually take the look at this. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it's actually rendering. I mean, it, it's kind of slow because it has to re-render, but you can see with or without the blur because the blur is basically non-destructive, meaning you can change your mind. That's all non-destructive editing mean. And I like to do non-destructive editing. So. OK, now the blur is back on, but let's say I want to change it. I want to make it more powerful. I'm, I double click on the blur gallery. I'm back here and let's like let's put like maybe 40 percent because I think 25 is not enough and then click on OK. And that is what making a smart object means, means you can change your mind. You can apply filters and you can come back to them. It does slow down your computer, but it's really cool. OK, so we're back. So now we have a very nice we have a very nice blur here, but it's kind of weird. It's everywhere. We don't want, you know, the reflection to be where I just want to, you basically want a reflection to be in the highlights. So how do you do this? Well, very simple. You hold on the option key on your keyboard or the alt key if you're on windows, and then you click on this, which is called making a layer mask. Okay. Are you ready? One, two, three, bam. And what that's going to do is that it's going to create a black mask. Now, one thing you have to understand in Photoshop is that black conceals and white reveals. You can write on your T-shirt, black conceals, white reveal, black conceals, white reveal. I had to repeat this sentence many years ago, so many times because I got always confused with, with mask. So basically black conceal means that this layer is now invisible because it's black. But now check this out. If I press B and I take a brush here, a brush, a very simple brush, let me take a really nice normal brush. So I'm going to go all the way because I've got lots of brush. I'm just going to take a soft round brush, for example, make sure the harness is at zero percent. OK, I got a nice brush and master trick pro tip. Mesdames et messieurs, pro tip. Pro tip is you can hold on the control and option key on your keyboard. And if you click left on your mouse and you go left and right, you can make your mouse, sorry, your brush or any tool for that matter in Photoshop, bigger or smaller. So I'm going to make it that big about now. The thing is brush have different powers. OK, now if white reveals and let me show you something. You see, if I put the opacity all the way and let, you can right click and let, if I put the hardness at 100 percent and make a small brush, here's what's going to happen when I'm going to brush. It's going to look very unreal. OK, so command Z to undo. Sorry, command Z to undo this brush stroke. And now if I right click and I put the hardness at zero percent and I brush, it's going to be better because it's going to be soft, but it's going to be too visible, right? I don't want that. So command Z to undo. But if I bring down the opacity of my brush, very low, like 20%, and I make it a bit bigger and I brush just on the highlights where it's bright. 
Now I'm bringing in some of this reflection and you can brush over and over just on the highlights. And I'm bringing some of this reflection slowly but surely. And it's gonna look more real. So that's how you blend things in Photoshop. It's, and I can bring in very slowly this reflection and they're even blurry. Check this out. We can double click here to change the name of this layer. Let's call this reflections. Reflections. Okay. Before, after, before, after. And now we have a sky with this reflection. By the way, I have a new book that just came out called Photoshop the Easy Way. You can get the book for free, the actual book. It's a big book for free. Just pay shipping and handling. And then you get two weeks free of coaching with me. Link is under this video also. And now I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to file, close. And what that's going to do is that it's going to save this. You can see here is the saving bottom left. And it's going to bring this back into Lightroom where I can do a final editing in it. By the way, guys, make sure you subscribe to this video. This is a new channel. Please subscribe, please share because the next episode is going to be about how to blend different exposure. We're going to do this amazing aura photo where we're going to blend a very long exposure with a very short exposure to get a very clean image. Blending exposure is one of the key things in Photoshop. So make sure you subscribe so you get noticed when that video comes out and you click the little bell for notification. Very important. Okay, so we're back in Lightroom with the photo. I like to do a final edit in Lightroom. That's why I like to work between Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm just going to open the shadows just very slightly, bring down the highlights slightly. I'm going to crush the blanks, crush the white. That's just going to add a bit of, of, you know, contrast, maybe add a bit of magenta. I think I want to be a, uh, I want to do a little bit of a dodge and burn on this photo. So what I'm, it means darkening or brightening. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a linear gradient. I'm going to click and drag here. And that's going to make the photo even more realistic. So now you have a gradient. You can see here in red is what is going to be influenced by the gradient. So if, for example, if I lower the exposure, you see the, that value of minus 0 0.40 is going to be applied in full from like the bottom of the photo to that red dot. And then it's going to be on a gradient all the way to the white. And I can make a very small gradient. Let, let me show you so you can see. I can make a small gradient or I can make a big smooth gradient. I can make it go down you know, and just make it how I want it. I just want to vignette the photo a bit because I want people to look inside of the photo. So I, I'm going to do that. And then I want to uh, maybe add a bit of a gradient here on top. Same, same idea. I'm going to lower the exposure, maybe add a bit of blue on top because I think it's lacking a bit of blue. And I really want people to look inside of the photo. So I'm going to add a radial gradient here. Okay, and the way the regular gradient is same thing. You see, you got some red, which is where the gradient is going to be applied. By the way, if you don't have red, uh, maybe it's because you have this. You know, you can have something like image on black. It's going to look weird or image on white. I see people having like different things like this. You need to have it on color overlay. Color overlay is going to make that you in red is what is going to be influenced. And what do I want to do? I want to add a bit of exposure. But now it's brightening a lot the Louvre. I only want the exposure to be on the sky, not on the Louvre. How can we do this? Well, if there was only a possibility, Madame et Messieurs, how do we do this? It's crazy. Well, you click here on the three dots, intersect mask with select sky. And what that's going to do is that it's going to see now the Louvre is a little bright, is a little darker. Check this out. This is only influencing the sky now. And then I think I want to basically make another one for the reflection here. Just a little bit of light here, if that would be reflecting. And that's just going to help people to go inside of the photo. OK, and I really like the final result. This is the before and this is the after. Make sure you subscribe so you get notified when that new video comes out about the Aurora. It's going to be crazy and check out my book. I'll see you next video.